My question is a bit off topic, uh, which we've already done plenty of times in this episode, which is great. <laughs> uh, but why do graphics drivers need to be made to optimize games? Why is it not that the games optimize themselves for the drivers? You would think the games being made would have to comply with the drivers rather than the <laughs> drivers complying with the game. Obey. Keep up the good work. Alex, what do you think? There's a lot of this is a yeah, funny question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like it because if you <laughs> if you read about it, um, games can they can do things that are like API illegal. They can do things that certain drivers don't support. Uh, drivers can say they support things, but maybe actually don't completely in the way that the person expects them who's writing the game. Uh, so there's a lot of it's just an, it's like any interface. There's like things that work and don't. You know, there's two things coming at each other and they're interfacing and it's like, okay, so we got to get them to work. That's why you have standard APIs, et cetera. Um, you would, the thing is, it depends on which APIs we're talking about though. Like with the old style, OpenGL, DirectX 11, a lot of it was coming from NVIDIA, AMD, Intel there doing all the quote unquote, a lot of optimization behind the scenes to make it running and run well. Um, with DirectX 12 and Vulkan, a lot of that responsibility goes down actually to the de developer. Not all of it, not all of it, definitely not all of it. It's still, there's still some layer there controlled by NVIDIA, AMD, and uh, Intel, but it, it is a lot of the developer's responsibility at that point in time. And that's why it is so hard. And that's why we've seen it done so unsuccessfully, I would say in the last, how long has DX12 existed? Almost like 10 years? Feels like now. Yeah, it's um, been a while. Has it been 10 years? Jeez. I, it might, uh, might have what, been. Mantle came out in like 2013. 2014 i don't remember but um it's been explicit apis on pc have been a thing for a while and it's so rare to see a game use them really really well because you're essentially having to take over a lot of responsibilities that a billion dollar company would usually have where they have all this money and everything to pump into it so um i'm i'm a little bit wishy-washy on explicit apis these days uh but yeah that's the way it is it's it's depending upon the API, but it's, yeah, it definitely still requires both to do something. Uh, still. Well, I mean, it's, like, it's, it's not like, you know, us developers have a sort of constant co contact with, you know, um, AMD or whatever, and yeah. they are like, oh, you will comply to this new update that we're going to <laughs> arbitrarily release three months from now or else. You know, it's uh, it's it would be impossible to do that. And also for them to communicate that to every developer in the world um so so yes there, yeah there's a give and take and this constant communication is a uh, you know and technology moves like especially on the on the graphic cards graphics card side is is you know there's there's new iterations coming out every few months whereas in the console space there's one console that comes out every few years so you know it's closed platform too. Right. Developers, we can't keep up with that pace nor can they come, keep up with our pace of making games so you know, there will always be a strange... And yeah, it almost would and... assume then that the drivers that the game is being made with are basically perfect. They would have to be, you know, right. functionally perfect at that point, or not necessarily perfect, but close to it. And they're not, uh, especially when they're always changing the hardware. You know, th there's a lot of stuff that's happening on the driver side. And because computers are open platforms, uh, there's just so many factors that have to be accounted for. So it's just, I think it's just companies having to work together to find the best solution for what they're trying to do mm -hmm. yeah and we and, and we sometimes as developers we sometimes discover things in hardware that the hardware manufacturers didn't even know that hardware could do you know so right i mean and, and i'm giving a simple example of a very a very simple example in this case because it's the, you know the game for the play date that we released uh with frederick renal earlier this year you know uh he having coming from he's now in his a man in his 50s right and so he's he he's known he's he's made his career built his career on actually writing straight to the chip you know he didn't use unity or unreal to to make graphics he always wrote bespoke engines from scratch well, such as the first real-time 3d character in a game human character which was in alone in the dark for instance and so so when he when he gets access to a piece of hardware he goes straight in there you know and so he was pushing that little play date silly play date with a crank you know to its limits from day one you know and they go like oh my god we didn't even know it could do this you know so and that's and that's technically what's happening on on smaller levels all the time with you know with with pc developers especially it's like they just unlock things that amd wasn't aware of and they go oh shit, 
now we have to support this but if we do ah, but there's gonna have a knock-on effect on the other games that don't ah and so that's 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 what's happening it's really interesting in that sense because it almost feels like an old school console uh compared to where we are now right because it's very limited in terms of overall capabilities but it sort of rewards creative programming from what i've seen mm-hmm. which is neat i'm happy that it's it gorgeous exists. it's a cool little device yeah have, have, have you done an episode about it no yet? and uh it's a tough one because filming that thing is difficult because it's not backlit no it has an amazing it has an amazing capture thing built oh, in it has it? a little app it's called yeah it's called mirror and uh you just get I'll it from the play website I'll have to grab that and try it and see what i can do because it's a cool little device yeah with mirror you can capture gameplay footage perfectly and it and it can even capture it at, at, at 2x so at like twice the size nice so it's more video right, friendly right, right. so it's super okay. awesome i'll have to look into that